Hey, you two family, brothers and sisters, all praises to the Most High Yah, giving praise, glory, and honor to his name, thanking and blessing him, our most beautiful Savior, for another day of grace that he has given us. It's been a few days, family, since I've uh, had a chance to talk with you after doing some videos. I've been prepping uh, as the ants, uh, the Bible talk about the ants, that you need to look to the ants, you sluggard, for the ants start preparing in the summertime for winter. So I've been busy setting aside firewood, getting firewood put up and everything else like that, and uh, getting ready for glitches in the grid, in the matrix, in the system, prepping canned goods and all kind of water and everything, getting ready for what's ahead. As you know right now, as you begin to go to all of the stores, you see all of the supplies and the goods and everything that they're out of right now. So uh, I just wanted to encourage your heart for a few minutes with a little bit of word that the Royal Kakadesh has spoken to my spirit today. Uh, the spirit was dealing with me about Yahshua when he spoke about the days of Noah. So I'm calling this as it was in the days of Noah. We're going to go right here to the book of Luke chapter 17 verse 26. I want to read a couple of scriptures there for your edification. Verse 26, Luke 17, verse 26, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. So you have to ask yourself the question, if Yahshua speaks about the days of Noah, he is giving a parallel. He is comparing the days of Noah to the days of the Son of Man. So he says, as it was in the days of Noah, so on our minds we should be thinking and asking the question, how was it in the days of Noah? What was going on in the days of Noah proceeding up until the flood came and took all of the wickedness of man away? So shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. So as the same thing was going on in Noah's day, when the Son of Man gets ready to return and come back, the same thing will be going on also. Verse 27 says, They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed all of them. And what that sounds like, these people were self-occupied. They were all into themselves. You know, kind of like we are today. Every time you turn around, we were in Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're checking out pics, we're taking pics, we're marrying, we're giving in marriage, we're feasting, we're partying, we're just totally oblivious to the signs of the times and Yahshua gave us a season. He said, when you see these things taking place, you know that my coming is at hand and our redemption is drawing nigh. So verse 28 says, likewise also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. So the main question that comes to mind is when the days of Noah was taking place, I just recently talked about that very briefly, the 120 years that Noah preached. Noah preached as he hammered away on that ark with his sons and prepping the ark and getting the ark ready. God gave them 120 years. He said man's flesh should only last these 120 years because man had become so wicked, so corrupt. And the scripture says proceeding before that, that violence covered the entire earth and every thought of man was wickedness. Every thought, everything a man even dreamed about was wickedness and violence. There was killing going on so much. And see, even Paul tells us in the scripture, in the last days, there shall be perilous times. And I just got through talking about and teaching men's hearts, failing them for fear of things which are to come. 
Men are going to have heart attacks and strokes for the things, the travails that are coming upon the earth, the earthquakes, the tsunamis, the plagues, the pestilence, the diseases. All of these things are coming upon the earth because we have been warned, brothers and sisters. So Yahshua said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man before he gets ready to return. You know, our scientists have become very wicked and evil. I was looking at a video the other day of transhumanism, or either you can call it crossbreeding, where doctors are taking human DNA and splicing them and mixing them with animals' DNA, and they, they formed some kind of animal, looks like a pig or something, but it had like a human face. And this is what they were doing. See, back in Noah's day, when uh, God had gave the prophetic word from Genesis 3 and 15, that the seed of the woman, the woman was going to bear a seed, and he was going to be the redeemer and the savior of all mankind. And ever since that prophecy went forth in Genesis chapter 3 and 15, Lucifer has tried everything in his power to corrupt that seed even the fallen angels that came down to earth. And I know you have some preachers try to preach against that, but the fallen angels that came down to earth, the Bible says the sons of God, even in the book of Enoch, the book of Enoch records that the sons of God, when they came down, they saw that the daughters of men looked very good and fair. And the Bible says that they procreated and they brought forth what was called Nephilims. Now, you know, we can't understand it. I heard one preacher uh, try to preach and say, well, angels don't have uh, semen. Angels uh, can't uh, marry. The Bible says, yes, angels do not marry. Yes, we understand all of that. But we do know something took place. And there's only two rationales for that scripture that talks about that. When the Bible says the sons of God lusted and looked upon the daughters of men and they procreated with them and they uh, had Nephilims which were those large, gigantic beings like Goliath. Whenever you have a crossbreeding going on with angels and humans, it brought forth, that was, a, that was a splicing of the DNA. And I don't know how they do they did it, but they did it somehow. So that's one way of looking at that scripture is that the fallen angels, the sons of God, they lusted after the daughters of men, and they desired them, and they brought forth Nephilims in the earth, large giants in the earth. Another way of looking at that scripture is the sons of God. Adam's sons, which was a godly line, uh, started to mingle with the uh, daughters of Cain. And that was an ungodly line. And then that brought forth, as they say, Nephilims. But if you really look at that humanly, humanly possible, two of those humans could not bring forth those large giants. So I'm going to go with the first, that the sons of God were the fallen angels that came down to earth and they traded secrets. They gave men wisdom and knowledge how to fight, how to war, how to paint them, their faces, the women, and they gave them technology. They gave them all kind of uh, math and geology, everything they needed to know. And these angels slept with the women and they brought forth superhuman giant beings called Nephilims. And when God saw the crossbreeding, that was going on in Noah's day, he had to put an end to it because he couldn't allow these humans. I mean, if you really look at it back then in those days, the sequoia, which is a tree, was a very large tree, kind of like the size of a mountain. Things back in those days were huge. They were huge compared to a tree today. Take one of our oldest trees you have today and compare it to a sequoia and one of those old huge trees back then. And I mean, it doesn't even compare a match. But that's what was going on in Noah's day was a crossbreeding of the DNA. And our scientists today have become very wicked and they are crossbreeding even into this juice today that we have going on in this plague. This jab that everybody is taking, they're drinking and they're eating the pudding. All of this stuff in here is uh, dark matter, dark particles. They have in this alien substance. You have in here the Anunnaki, the fallen angels. You have bits and pieces. This is why this is being mandated for everybody, for all. They're trying to crossbreed all of us. And there's some big things that's going to be taking place here if you're keeping up in the spirit between October and December. 
Everybody's been talking about the purple lights and the black lights, the street lights they have up. We've all been discussing that and seeing that and the 5G is supposedly kicking on everywhere starting in January. The Pope, as I stated before, he's got a big conference going on. We're over in Abu Dubai. They are starting off the first of the year next year, the one world religion starting with the Muslims having the mosque. The Catholic Church will be the church, official church of all the world, the one world religion. They're not allowed to have a cross on it and you will have a synagogue for those Khazar Jews over in Israel. So as it was in the days of Noah and as it was in the days of Lot, so Yahshua gives us a sign. So keep your head up, hold your head up high, endure these troublesome times right now. Endure the persecution, endure the food shortages, endure the water shortages, endure the tsunamis, the storms, the hurricanes, endure everything that this tyrant government is putting upon us right now. For our deliverance is nigh. Every time I look at the news and see that they're really pushing this new world order and this one world agenda, and I already showed you guys in videos, it is their plan to bring down the population, population control, to bring this country down from 7 billion to 1 billion people. They already said it. However, they got to do it. If they got to do it through the Jews, if they have to do it through starvation and Bill Gates buying up all the farmland and the property and paying the farmers to destroy their crops, whatever they have to do, they will do it so they can have their way. Well, we have to be strong, brothers and sisters, in this day and time. Don't let your faith flinch. Keep your uh, faith strong. Look unto Yahshua. Stay in his word. Stay in prayer. Stay in fasting. Uh, learn to fast. Stock up, as I always said. Get yourselves together. Prepare for the outages. They're prepping us. Just like Texas last year. Remember, Texas had that big s snowstorm come through. Froze their pipelines. Water leaking all in the house everywhere. And you know, Texas doesn't even get water like that. But be prepared for what is to come. It's better to be, to be prepared and not need it than to need it and not have it. So always prepare yourselves. All right, brothers and sisters, I thank you to all my subscribers. I'm very grateful for you, for all of you that have been ministers and taking this word and sharing it with all the brothers and sisters in the faith. Pass this word along as it was in the days of Noah. So shall it be in the days of the Son of Man when he returns. He's given us signs. He said you can even look up at, at the sun. You can look at the weather. You know when summer is nigh. You heathens, you can discern that, but you can't discern the signs of the times. The Antichrist is on the scene right now. Keep your eyes on Joe Biden. Keep your eyes on Trump. Trump isn't hidden in the background. Keep your eyes on Barack Obama. Let's, let's just look at everything. Because things will be taking place very, very soon. All right, brothers and sisters. Love you with the love of Yahshua. Shalom.